So we have the deformed rig, and I've replaced the mesh. The previous geometry which I was using is an absolute mess. This is slightly better geometry. We've also attached the root bone to our animated skeleton, and we've added our polygon reduction. So now I can export a lower poly version of this rig. And next I want to be able to attach materials for export. There are also additional things that we need to specify, and these are not specifically materials, but they are required by FBX in order to understand what we're exporting. For example, we need to allow FBX to identify what this mesh is. As the mesh currently stands, it will not exist within FBX, so we cannot export this mesh until we've made a way to identify that this mesh actually exists. And this will be achieved by adding a name attribute to our mesh. I'm going to do this with a name node. We can technically name different parts of the mesh and create separate meshes within FBX. So for example, I could name the head, the abdomen, and the legs all separately and have them show up as three different meshes. But something that we need to do is make sure that every single primitive has a valid name attribute. In this case, everything will be a single mesh, and I'll give this mesh the name insect. That will identify our mesh. Next, I'll start working on materials for this mesh. And I'll start by creating some groups. To do this, I'll get a group node. In the group node, I'll set the group name to be $OS so that it will use the node's name as the group. I'll call this node abdomen. The group type should be primitives. I will select a primitive on the abdomen and I'll expand the selection. I'll do this using the shortcut Shift G. I can then duplicate this group node. This duplicated node will be for my head, so I'll rename the node. I'll select a primitive on the head, and then I'll expand the group once again. I'll repeat this process for the legs. The next thing that I want to do is actually create the materials. I'll get a material network node. I'll call this node insect materials. And inside this node, we can start adding our materials. For FBX, there is only one type of shader node that will work, and that is the principled shader. If we try to use any other shader, it will not read the parameters and set them correctly. So I'll create three principal shaders. I'll call the first one abdomen, and I'll give it a dark ochre color. The next material will be for our head, and I'll give the head a dark red color. The final material will be for my legs, and I'll give my legs a dark gray color. Now we need to do two things. We need to attach our materials to our mesh. We also need to create the materials for FBX. Like with our mesh, the materials do not exist in the context of FBX. We have to explicitly say that they exist. So we need to create an attribute for material identifiers for the export. This attribute will not affect the materials on the mesh. Instead, it will be the identifier for FBX to say, this is a material. For this, I'm going to use a name node. However, we're not going to use the name attribute. Instead, we're going to change this and it's going to be FBX material name. This attribute name is specific. It must be called FBX material name. This attribute can then be added to the abdomen group. There will actually be three of these groups that we are creating. And these will be for my abdomen group, my head group, and my legs group. And I'll make the names for the materials match the names for the groups. In this case, they'll also match the name for the shaders which I've created. One thing that I will state is these are terrible naming conventions for materials. When it comes to actual production, we want to use a material name that is far more descriptive but this will be sufficient for testing. We should now have all the main attributes that I need for the export. There are other attributes which are needed for the export of FBX, but most of those are created automatically. The attributes have been created, and now we can connect the materials to the mesh. I'll get a material node, and we can connect that to our mesh. This can also be connected to our main network now, and it will be connected to our bone capture by harmonic node. We'll need three materials. The first one will be for our abdomen. I'll then reference my materials. First will be my insect materials network. 
and within this I'll specify the abdomen shader. And what we can do at this point is we can actually override the parameters of the material. In this case I'll override the albedo, which will also often be referred to as the diffuse, although in the principal shader it will be referred to as the base color. In this case I'll darken it by changing the saturation, and I'll add some red to it to make it a richer brown. The next material will be set on our head group. For the materials, I'll specify our insect materials node, and I'll specify the head material. Once again I'll add a base color override, and I'll change the saturation of the head to make it darker. The legs will apply to the leg group. Once again this will refer to the insect material shader, and the shader will be the leg shader. I've now updated the colors for this insect, but if I select my paint capture layer node we'll see that the mesh has no materials. This is because of my stash node. The network is using the cached mesh from the stash node, so I need to update the stash by pressing stash input. At this point we can refer to our geometry spreadsheet. We want to make sure that the correct parameters are applied to the entirety of the mesh. So for the legs you'll see that our material override is empty, which is correct as we have not added an override, but we do have a reference to our material path, and this is under the attribute shop material path. If we scroll down to our head group, we'll see that our head material has a material override. We should also see that the shop material now refers to the head. And these three parameters are what will set our materials in the FBX. The FBX material name will create the name for the material and the material itself. The shader will then be set by our shop material path, and then the overrides will be applied to that material. So in the information node, I can take a look at some of the attributes that we have which are required for the FBX export. The primitive attributes apply to the mesh. The name will be for the mesh itself and will identify the mesh in the FBX. The FBX material names will be the names of our materials. The shop material path attribute will refer to our material, and this is the material in Houdini that will be used to create the material parameters. And the material attribute override will store any updates to those materials. For the point attributes, two of these attributes are needed for the export. That would be the point position and the bone capture attribute. Most of the other attributes and the groups can be removed, or they'll be ignored by the FBX exporter. So those are the materials for our export, and in the next video we'll take a look at the export itself.